Hey, this is Overpass Insights. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, let's talk about how to handle a recession as a software developer. So the weather here in England today is beautiful. It is so, we're in the middle of a heat wave right now and I absolutely love it, right? A lot, every time there's like, every time it gets really warm in the summertime here, which is, it's not that often, right? But we'll have like a few days each year where it gets really, really warm and everyone complains, oh, it's just too hot, too hot. But I just, I just love it. It reminds me of growing up in, in Southern California, growing up in San Diego and the, the you know, the summers and just being like, oh, walking outside and it, it's like a blanket that goes around you. I just love this kind of weather. So anyway, so I had to do the video outside today. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about the R word, you know, recession, right? I've seen a lot of YouTubers, uh, technology YouTubers lately talking about how to survive the, the recession as a developer, because we all know there's a recession coming, right? It's just, you know, things have been too good for so long. You know, we're, we're going to be on a downward, you know, spiral here a little bit. We're going to like, things are going to get a little bit worse, right? And I've been a developer for a long time and I've been through quite a few, uh, quite a few recessions. I've been through the, um, the technology burst in the early 2000s, you know, 2008 when the, uh, the, uh, the big crash in 2008, ping, like I was working in an investment bank at the time, right? So we went through a lot of that kind of stuff and I could tell you that recessions, Ah, they suck, right? They're just, you know, they just, they are what they are. But the, the thing about recessions are, and the thing about which I think is stupid about giving advice about recessions is, there's nothing you could do about it, right? You know, a, a recession is like bad weather, right? You need to be ready for it. You need to, you know, see that it's coming. When times are good, when the weather's good, you need to know that eventually, you know, weather's going to be bad. Things go up, things go down. You need to be marketable. You need to make sure you're, you know, you're, you're ready for it, which means, again, a lot like with bad weather, if you're stuck out in bad weather and you're indoors, it might be best just to stay indoors, right? So if you're in a job that you like, or if you're in a job at all, you might want to work really hard to stay in that job, right? There's, you know, you want to be the most indispensable person in that company, because if they start, you know, if your company is, the company you work for is going through any trouble, they're going to need to make some cuts, right? They might not want to, but they might need to make some cuts and you want to make sure that, you know, in a very Machiavellian way that, you know, you got to be that indispensable person, right? You can't just be, you know, I only work on GUI. I only work on server. I only work on databases, right? You got to be that person who's like, okay, my primary thing is this, but you could do anything. You could be the person who could fill any gap, right? Um, I think one of the nice things about the recessions is, and it, you know, I hate to say this is, but, the people with the biggest egos and the biggest salaries are the ones that go, right? They're the ones that are like, you know, they're thinking, hmm, can we do without this guy? Right, so if you're gonna be a team player, you know, that's good, right? And again, so, and for those of you guys who don't have a job, or if you're in a job that you hate, or you're, or you're not in a job or whatever, or you're doing your own kind of stuff, um, and you need to find a job, it's still possible, right? That's the thing. It's it's like the the, the only th the only benefit you have about thinking about a recession is, well, there's no benefit, right? Because you still have to do what you have to do, right? You it's just going to be a little bit harder. So if you're looking for a job, you need to apply to loads more jobs. You need to send out way more CVs. You need to make sure you're not one of those people who sends out a CV and says, "I'll just wait to see what happens." No, you got to be like every single day, right? My, I went from being a permanent employee to a contractor in a really, really bad market. I was working at this company. I was there for, I, the last time I was a permanent employee, I was at this company and I was just miserable. You know, I know we talked before about the toxic workplace. This was just a toxic workplace. You know, there was, you know, everything it was a blame culture. If you ever worked at a place with a blame culture, that's what it was. I, I worked in this place, which was definitely a blame culture. And it was, you know, I was just, sick you fed up with it and eventually I just quit I kept applying for other stuff trying to look to something else to go to and eventually I just quit 
and it was scary. I can remember going to, I had just, I went to a, of all these different recruitment agents, you know, applied for every single thing, got no interviews for like a while, for like a month. Uh, and I can remember this one recruitment agent saying to me, are you telling, I can remember him, because for some reason I had to go to his office, it wasn't on the phone. And he goes, are you telling me that you left a perfectly good job in this market? And I felt, dude, man, I felt this small. I felt like, you know, like I didn't know what I was doing and he, and he, he caught me, called me out on it, you know, and, uh, but I did, I found like a job that paid more than double or nearly double, nearly double what I had just left, right? Because there were positions out there, but a lot of people were scared to look or they were afraid to leave the job that they were in because we were all afraid of the recession, like everything was going bad. So I just wanted to put this out there because Recessions happen, right? They're the kind of thing where, you know, like I said, the, the developers with the biggest ego, they're the ones that are going to be, you know, right? Um, hopefully, you know, the ones that, you know, it, that's, it, it kind of levels the market and everything like that. It's just one of these things that happens. You're, you, the only thing you could do, again, through good markets and bad markets, is keep your skills up. Make sure that you're marketable. Make sure your CV's up to date. Make sure that you know you're you're up with the latest technologies. Don't be one of these kind of people who are like, "Oh man, I was going to learn that new technology, but my boss wouldn't let me." That's no excuse, right? You're responsible for your own education and for your own future and your own career. I don't know. Let me know if you guys agree with me or disagree with me. You know, I, I tend to be a bit Machiavellian about this kind of stuff. At the end of the day, it's all about you and your family. You know, taking care of yourself. And uh, and when, you know, when heads are on the chopping block, uh, job wise, you need to make sure that you are proving yourself and you, and your skills are marketable. And you, you know, if you need to go to something else, there's people looking for you. And if you need to stay where you are, you know, there's no way they would let you go because you just contribute so much. Anyway, let me know, guys. Agree with me or disagree with me? It is beautiful out here today. I hope you guys are having a, a a great day, having a great week. That is it for today. Oh, thank you for liking and subscribing. Yada, yada, yada. That is it for today. I'll talk to you again. Peace.